Milk has been a dietary staple for centuries, but not all milk is created equal. One topic that has gained a lot of attention in recent years is the difference between A1 and A2 milk. If you ever heard people talking about how some milk causes bloating or digestive discomfort, while other milk doesn't, chances are they're referring to this debate. So what's the deal with A1 versus A2 milk? Let's dive into the science, the health effects, and the claims surrounding these two types of milk. Okay, so the main difference between A1 and A2 milk comes down to the casein protein, which you probably heard of before. Casein is one of the primary proteins in cow's milk, and it is also the primary emulsifier in it. So it helps with mixing oils, fats, and water. More specifically, we are interested in a subtype called beta casein. It exists in two forms, A1 and A2. This difference originates from a genetic mutation that occurred thousands of years ago. Originally, cows produced only A2 beta casein, but as herds spread and breeds diversified, a genetic mutation led to the development of A1 beta casein. Today, most modern dairy cows such as Holsteins and Friesians, so the breeds commonly used in commercial dairy farming, produce milk containing both A1 and A2. On the other hand, cows like Jerseys, Guernseys and some heritage breeds produce milk with only A2 beta casein. So what does this difference exactly mean? It all comes down to digestion. The beta casein protein in A1 and A2 milk differs by just one amino acid. In A1 beta casein, this amino acid is histidine, while in A2 beta casein, it's proline. This small change has a big impact during digestion. When A1 beta casein is broken down in the gut, it produces a byproduct called beta casomorphine 7, also known as BCM7. BCM7 is a peptide that some research suggests may contribute to digestive and inflammatory issues. A2 beta casein, on the other hand, does not release BCM7, which is why A2 milk is often marketed as being easier to digest. Now, the research on A1 versus A2 milk is still evolving, but several studies have looked at how these two types of milk affect the gut and overall health. One of the main areas of focus is the potential digestive problems associated with A1 milk. Studies have found that some people experience bloating, cramping, and changes in stool consistency after drinking A1 milk, but they report fewer or no symptoms when drinking A2 milk. Again, the main line of thought here is that BCM7 released during the digestion of A1 milk plays a role in all of these symptoms, by irritating the gut lining and also by slowing gut motility, so how quickly food moves through the digestive system. For example, one study compared the effects of A1 and A2 milk and found that the participants who consumed milk that contained only A2 beta casein had significantly less severe GI symptoms and reduced stool frequency and also improvements in stool consistency compared to the participants that drank conventional A1 milk. The A2 milk also led to higher glutathione levels and lower immunoglobulin levels, which I thought was super interesting. But keep in mind that this study was done on Chinese participants, where milk or dairy intolerance is a lot more prevalent than in their Western counterparts. Now, what about lactose intolerance? It is caused by the inability to break down lactose, the sugar in milk, due to low levels of the enzyme lactase. This is separate from the issue potentially caused by A1 beta casein, which is related to protein byproducts, but not milk sugar. So if you're lactose intolerant, neither A1 nor A2 milk will make much of a difference unless the milk is labeled lactose free. That said, a lot of people think they're lactose intolerant, but they're actually reacting to other things in the milk not necessarily the milk sugar. So this could explain why they tolerate A2 milk better, even though it still contains lactose. Beyond digestive issues, researchers have also explored whether A1 and A2 milk have broader effects on health. Like I said before, the Chinese study found higher immune response markers, and other studies have also linked 
BCM7 to inflammation in the gut. Chronic low-grade inflammation is linked to a range of health issues, from autoimmune diseases to metabolic disorders. Even though more research is definitely needed to confirm these effects in humans, the idea that lower quality A1 milk can contribute to inflammation definitely has some merit and will fuel interest in A2 milk as a potentially healthier alternative in the future. If you really want to dig into the literature, you could also look at the impact of A1 milk on neurological health. This is something speculative, but because BCM7 is an opioid-like compound, there is speculation that it could influence brain function, especially in people who are sensitive to it. Early research has raised questions about whether A1 milk could contribute to behavioral or cognitive issues in certain people, but these studies are still in their infancy and far from conclusive. This is one area where more rigorous research is definitely needed. It's also worth mentioning that A2 milk isn't the only option for people looking for an alternative to regular milk. Goat's milk and sheep's milk naturally contain only A2 beta casein because the genetic mutation that led to the production of A1 occurred only in cows, but it didn't affect goats or sheep. As a result, basically all types of goats and sheep's milk retain the original A2 beta casein protein structure. Beyond being naturally A2, goats and sheep's milk have additional qualities that make them easier to digest for many people. For instance, they have smaller fat globules compared to cow's milk, which makes the fat easier for the gut to break down and absorb. They're also rich in medium chain fatty acids, which are a type of fat that's more readily digested and absorbed than the long chain fatty acids found in cow's milk. Both goat's and sheep's milk also contain oligosaccharides, which are prebiotic compounds that feed beneficial gut bacteria and support a healthy microbiome. This combination of being naturally A2 and offering gut-friendly compounds makes them a very good choice for people looking for a dairy option to try out if they have problems with regular cow's milk. Okay, so to wrap up this video, what's my recommendation when it comes to A1 versus A2 milk? To be honest, it really depends on how your body reacts to them. If regular milk works for you and you feel great with it, then never change a running system, I guess. But if you often get bloated, have problems digesting milk, and it is unrelated to lactose, then checking out A2 milk is definitely something I would recommend. I would also recommend looking into raw milk, since some people who don't tolerate pasteurized milk do tolerate raw milk. But because raw milk does carry the risk of pathogens and is illegal in some regions of the world, it is a controversial topic that I can't get into in this video. Another thing to try out is switching from milk, which is a liquid dairy product and is very quickly digested, to a more slow digesting, harder dairy product like cheese or yogurt. Many people who don't tolerate milk do tolerate other dairy. Of course, as always, when buying dairy, make sure you get the highest quality you can find. The healthier the animal, the more nutritious its products. This should be obvious.